me know there's ways of God that go above the ways of man that you can prosper when other people struggle, that you can get healed when other people suffer, that you can have peace while other people got turmoil, or you can have favor while other people get rejection, that you can be the head rather than the tail, all because of the God you serve. Give the Lord a clap and a shout if you got this. Why don't we give the Lord a big old clap? Come on, Arise Church. Give the Lord a big, 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 big clap. Come on, all you great people. Before you sit down, turn to the person next to you. Say, get ready, get ready. You look better than you did before. You look stronger and healthier, and then you can sit down. If it's your spouse, tell them they look the best they've ever looked. How many of you are grateful for an amazing church with an amazing worship team? Can we give them a big old clap? They were here really early while all of us were sleeping, eating breakfast, looking at social media. They were here preparing. I really want to give them honor because that takes a big commitment to serve God in that way so that we come in. Imagine we get to feel God. How great is that? Because people prepared themselves just to come and lead us in that way. Awesome job. Also, I want to give thanks before anybody else. All the ushers, all the people serving, doing media, people doing sound, and all of our children's <laughs> pastors and leaders, can we give them a big old clap? If you're serving today, if you're serving today, lift your hand up so we can honor you if you're serving. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's awesome. I see back there. That's a big deal. That's a big deal in God's kingdom to serve. I started out with Kids Church. They didn't let me speak in the main service. I came out of professional baseball. I cussed too much. And so they stuck me with the four-year-olds in case I had one slip. I'd be okay. Um, we love your pastors. My wife is here with me today and my, my daughter, Kira, Katrina. Can you guys stand real quick? Um, I'll real quick, I'll give you a snapshot. Maybe I'll use, use a little bit of that tonight. But... Um, my wife, I met many, many years ago. Uh, she came forward in a meeting, and um, I had a word for her to go, uh, and uh, God was going to use a certain situation to turn her life around. She was facing a life and death situation in her health, and they took her heart out of her chest for four hours, and they gave her no chance to live. And through that word, God used it to bring her life. And then we met years later, and we were able to marry, so it's a really incredible story. And my wife went through incredible trauma in her life, and she's used that power to become, through that pain to really become power and help other people that are in the sex trafficking industry and things of that nature get free. So my wife is my hero, so I'm happy that she's here in the second service. Um, my little girl, they told us we could not have a child, so we decided to have a child. Medical science said it was impossible for us to have a child, and so we decided to do the impossible. How many of you know there's everybody with an opinion, and there's one person with truth? Amen. And um, you can live your life by everybody's opinions, or you can decide, hey, I'm just going to go for it. I got one shot on this planet. I'm going to release my faith. Whether it's easy or it's difficult, I've learned faith doesn't make things easy. It makes things possible. How many know faith does not make everything easy? And uh, there's a reason why the gift of the Spirit calls the working of miracles, because sometimes you've got to work a miracle out. And uh, so we decided to have a child. My wife died giving birth to my daughter, and she came back to life. And we took us about six months, but we had a healthy child. And so anyways, I'm really happy that she's here. I always, that, that's my greatest achievement in life. I got a chance to be a husband and a, and a dad. So, all right. You guys have, this is cool because... You guys, your pastors have been talked about by a lot of different pastors and some of the people I respect the most. For a couple of years, we would hear talk about what was happening in Hilo and this great church arise and your great pastors and seeing the integrity and the way that they care for you, the way that you're on their hearts and their minds and that they live to serve God's purpose and serve you guys the best. How many grateful for pastors that are in your corner when things are easy? And when things are challenging, that you have people like a corner man that can give you strategy from God. They can pray God into your situation. They can be with you in the highs and celebrate with you. But also when things are not easy and they can sit there and hold your arms up and believe with you and stand with your family. Isn't that awesome to be able to have that kind of a culture? I love that. Your pastors are 
uh, they become our friends now. This is no longer acquaintances. We started dating two years ago, <laughs> and it's progressed. It started with a like you, and now it's like we heart each other. We've gone to the next level. Um, if you have your Bible, go with me to the right-hand side of it, Luke chapter 5. You say, why do you use the Bible? Because it works. Um, I don't want good results. I want God results. Somebody say amen. amen. I said this in the first service. Tony Robbins asked me at dinner, he said, what do you use to get the results that you get? And I go, I use the Bible. And he gave me the Benji the dog look. And he goes, are you serious? I go, yeah, I don't want to build my life on something natural. I want to build it on something supernatural. And I know what this book can do because when I came out of professional sports, I, I met a 76-year-old woman who met me on an airplane, a little grandmother, and she spoke the word of Christ into my heart, and I came alive. And I remember how powerful that word is spoken by somebody else. And these weren't natural words, because I remember my, na my human nature can get me into a lot of problems, but I needed something beyond human nature to get me out of those problems. I had sins, I had guilt, I had dirt, I had shame, I had pain in my life, we had all kinds of things. But this word has supernatural power to lift you out of bad stuff and get you into great places of peace, great places of mercy, great places of abundant provision, and great things. This word's going to change your life. And I use this little story. Kevin Hart, how many know him, the comedian in Hollywood? Really, really funny entertainer. He was trying to get his career off the ground, and he was in Hollywood. And he was struggling to get it off the ground. And he would call his mother for a couple different months in a row. It started about January of the year. And he said, Mom, I need money for rent. Mom, I need money for rent. His mother would say, go read your Bible. He goes, I don't got time to read my Bible. I'm trying to hustle, trying to grind, trying to make it happen. He goes, his mother would say, go read your Bible, then call me. The whole month would pass. And then he'd call again, Mom, I need money for rent. I'm really following behind. But I know something good's good going to happen. She goes, go read your Bible, Kevin. Mom, I don't got no time to read no Bible. I'm trying to do my grind, trying to work hard and hustle. I got to make it happen. Finally, they got to the fifth and a half month. And that month, they were going to evict him because he had not paid for five months' rent. And so he called his mom and goes, Mom, please, can you send me some money? She says, Kevin, go read your Bible. He says, I read my Bible. She says, you're lying. How many know mamas know the truth? Come on, somebody. I got any mamas out there that got kids going, you know when your kid's telling you something that ain't true. Go read your Bible and call me back. So he goes, fine, mom, I'll go read the Bible. And it was a Bible she had bought at Christmas for him and put his name on it. So he opened the Bible, and there inside of the Bible in the New Testament were six months of rent checks she had already paid for him. And she put all of that provision, but it was in the Word of God, but he never opened the Word of God, so he never got the provision. How many know there's provision in God's Word? All right, they're ready to go. You ready to go? All right, I'm ready to go right now. Rome, uh, Luke chapter 5, we're going to look at the Dr. Luke. I like to listen to the doctor here for a minute. Verses 1 through 11. It came to pass... That the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God. He stood by a lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats anchored in the shallow end of the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. He entered into one of the boats, which was Simon, Peter's, and asked him if he would thrust out a little bit from the land. He sat down and taught the people out of the boat. When he stopped speaking, he said to Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon Peter answers, says, Master, yo, Jesus, I'm tired. I've worked all night. The word toil means to be tired on the inside, tired on the outside. And plus, I caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. And when they did this, they caught such a great multitude of fish that their nets began to break. So they told their partners, their Instagram friends, which were in the other boat, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to seek. When Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, and he says, Depart from me, Jesus. I'm a sinful guy. For he was astonished. That means to have your mind blown. Come on, that's cool. Someone say astonished. Someone say that's in your future. Now just touch the person next to you on the shoulder. Say you're about to be astonished. Ooh, this is going to be good. Why? He and all that were with him at this abundance of fish that came in their boat. 
So also were James and John, who were the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Jesus says, don't be freaked out. From now on, you're going to catch men. And when they brought their ships to the land, they forsook all and they followed him. This is going to be awesome today. You ready? So you let me come down here. It's interesting that it says they pressed in to Jesus. The word press, according to Webster's Dictionary, means to use force or focus to get somewhere or to get something. Have you noticed in your life that you usually don't press till you get a little bit desperate? Come on, I think the, big le- the biggest four-letter F word that messes us up, come on, are you ready for it? Can I say it in church? It's fine. <laughs> oh, you thought I was going to say the F word. No, no, no. What do you mean? How's everything? It's fine. How's your marriage? It's fine, pastor. How's your health? It's fine. It's not great where you celebrate it, and it's not painful enough that you want to do something about it. It's just fine. Come on, there's not hunger. It's just fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Come on. Just want to throw somebody off this whole entire week. Walk into your coffee shop. Walk into the local shop. When they ask you how you're doing, just go, oh my gosh, I'm doing amazing. You'll freak everybody out. Come on. Imagine how different our news channels would be. Imagine on CNN, come on, and Fox News. They're both fake news channels. Come on. Imagine if we both turned them both on. And imagine if they, because they could do it, but they, they won't because they pay money off of pay, paying negative news and fear. That's how they make all their money. But if they were to go, oh, my gosh, Pastor Shinobi, a miracle's happened today. The sun is rising in Hilo, no rain. The sun is rising today. Animals are out. Come on. I saw some sheep. I saw some goats. Today's going to be a glory. Fish are biting like crazy. Go get your fishing poles. A miracle's happened today. How many know they could do that? How many know a bunch of people be in a lot better position in their minds? But how many know they make money off you being negative? (laughs) The worst is going to happen. Joe Biden's going to fall off his bike. Come on, somebody. (laughs) The orange guy is going to get in there again. How many glad that you don't serve a government, you serve a king? And his kingdom can't fail. He's got a system called the kingdom that works when this world doesn't. How many know there's ways of God that go above the ways of man that you can prosper when other people struggle, that you can get healed when other people suffer, that you can have peace while other people got turmoil, or you can have favor while other people get rejection, that you can be the head rather than the tail, all because of the God you serve. Give the Lord a clap and a shout if you got this. Hey, stir yourself up. Oh, you're going to like this. Just like the lady in the first service whose eye was blind since 2013. And her eye opened up in front of every great things are about to happen in here today. This ain't a joke. Come on, watch how cool this is. They pressed into Jesus. They used energy. They used force because they got hungry of his atmosphere. This man from Nazareth. News was spreading without the gram, without Facebook. That this man from Nazareth had supernatural power on him. There was ideas this could be the Messiah. This was a prophet. Nobody had been speaking for God for 400 years. All of a sudden, this man emerged out of a small, dark place. Other people overlooked and think that, oh, it's not that religious. It's not that smart. Other people could overlook you because, oh, they're not this. They're not that. And God could put his grace and favor on you. Come on. And you can emerge out of something. So they pressed into him to hear the word of God. To press means to have a hunger. How many know when you're hungry for something, man, you have an appetite? Come on, things change. You start making preparations for it. You get hungry for it. How many know the Bible says that the hungry get filled with good things? They get filled. That Isaiah 64, 4, one of my favorite verses says, God meets those that are expecting and hungry, and that means leaning into him. Hopefully you didn't come and like, I I got the new do not disturb sign on today, God. Don't mess with me. (laughs) So what if that guy's up there and he's got a little bit of a pink face? Whatever. (laughs) I know it's Palm Sunday, but I'm not waving my palm. (laughs) It's amazing how many times we get caught going to church doing the usual 
and we stop expecting that God could sh actually show up. Imagine if Jesus walked through that screen right now, said, Rex, get out of my way. I'm looking for somebody in Hilo to do good to them today, that mercy could touch them and turn their family around, turn their child around, cancel a debt in their life. Imagine how different you would be. You wouldn't be sitting there going, whatever, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, how many of you would be like, hey, hey. go ahead, Messiah. The hungry. I remember going to Africa. I was all excited. My first trip. I had never gone on a safari before. Oh, sorry, it was my second trip, actually. And I was so pumped up. I paid the money. I went to a great place. They said, we're going to see the lions. I was so fired up because I like watching the National Geographic. And I like watching lions eat zebras. <laughs> I'm a man. Come on, somebody. I don't need no government official to tell me what I am. I'm not my feelings. I'm a man. How many know you don't, got, you don't need no one else to tell you who you are? Go look in the mirror, you'll find out what you is. True science. So I'm out there. I'm all excited. I paid all the money. I'm ready to go. We call them a pride, a pride of lions, 18 of them. And I want to see, like, Simba rip apart an animal. I paid the money to see it. And I'm disappointed. They're sitting there, and they're lazy. They don't get up for nothing. Took out M&Ms and peanuts, chucked it at lions. They don't move. Got my Sprite can, was throwing Sprite on them. They didn't even lick it off. They sat there. I go, what's wrong? They go, it's during the day. During the day, the lion is lazy. I go, what happens at night? During the day, they sleep 18 hours. They're lazy. But I go, what happens at night? They get hungry. I go, what happens? He says, the whole dynamic on the plane, it changes. The whole atmosphere in the jungle changes. The water buffalo that's stronger stands at attention. The elephant that's 10,000, 5 to 10,000 pounds, all of a sudden they stand on edge. Everything changes when the lion merges out of the grass. Not because of his size or his strength, but because of the size of his hunger, he becomes a leader of the jungle. How many know when you get more hungry, your family changes, your children change? When you get more hungry, what God does in your life shifts. The passion in your life changes come on tell me a hungry leader that goes in that works in a corporation they have the most influence if you got the most hope and most hunger you have the most influence make sure you're the person with the most hope come on so someone say that's me slap the person next to you by face say that's you <laughs> by the way if you're going to be a christ follower we have a responsibility we to be the most happy, passionate, hopeful people in the entire world. Even if the world is falling down by a virus, we need to stand up and be full of hope because we have an eternal life. Come on, somebody. You have a living Savior, a living healer. Hey, well, well how do I stir up hunger? How do I get it in me? Tell yourself this question. If I'm in the same place six months from now financially, emotionally, relationally, Physically, am I going to be okay with that? Shouldn't there be something inside of every one of us that goes, I ain't going to be okay if I'm in the same place I am six months from now. I'm not going to be okay. Isn't there something inside of us that goes, my life was created to go forward. I need to become more. I need to give more. I need to share more. I need to love more. Anybody feel that? I want to be closer to my kids, closer to my grand. Anybody feel that? I want to be a better parent. There's something inside of us that we just can't rest on our laurels. But we got to grow. But also what I love about stirring up hunger is when you get around other hungry people. That's what's so powerful about coming into an environment of church where the Bible says come together so you don't get destroyed. I've seen, I've been in the Middle East before where a shepherd's guiding his sheep and the stragglers that are all alone and the wolf targets the ones that don't, are operating with the other sheep. And I've seen the shepherd run. I was in the middle of where Elijah was fed by birds, blind birds. And a shepherd ran to the back to corral the sheep, not to hurt them, but make sure they were a part of an atmosphere where they couldn't take, get taken advantage of. How many know when you get into an atmosphere where they stir up love like you are to Rise Church? Come on. Good works. The works of God in you. Come on. It makes you care more. Have you ever been around someone who has better eating habits than you? Tell me how depressing that is. Have you ever been around somebody, though, that has better, maybe they get along with their kids better than you get along with your kids? They're more into their wife, come on, than you are, more into their husband. Come on, I saw some of you women, come on, some of you men, like, hugging it out with your spouse today. That's attractive. 
I love getting around people that are better than me because it sharpens you and makes you want to be better. People that think better, people that think smarter, exposure expands you. Therefore, when God wants to increase you, he brings a person that's anointed. When the devil wants to destroy you, he isolates you. But when God wants to increase you, pay attention who God keeps bringing around you because he's trying to expose you to more so he can elevate you. He wants to expose you so he can elevate you. When God wanted to elevate Timothy, let's send him a Paul. When God wanted to elevate Paul, let's send him a Barnabas. When God wanted to elevate, come on, Mary, let's send him an Elizabeth. Let's put around an environment where other people got miracles inside them. Because when they get together, they start thinking different. They start praying different. Come on. How many could use a little bit of different prayer life? Oh, am I the only one? Come on, you know that God's like, come on, you got anything new for me? How many pray the same prayer over and over and over? God's like, please give me new material. Come on, please, come on, stir your faith up a little bit. Someone's going to get their fire back today, and if you do, you'll get your life back. You'll get your future back. You'll get your energy back. Watch. They pressed in to hear the word of God. I didn't teach this in the first session, but I'm going to skip here just for a second. There's three voices you hear. There's God's voice, your voice, and the devil's voice. Which one has your ear? Which one's running your life? If it's your voice, it's always full of insecurity. Oh my gosh, what do they think about me? Am I skinny enough? Am I chubby enough? Am I brown enough? Am I white enough? Is he a howie? Is he not? Come on, somebody. <laughs> do they know my failures? Come on, it's waiting for validation from everybody else. But that makes you the reference point for my potential. It makes you the reference point. I only perform up to the level of your ability. If my voice is or my ear is turned into the enemy's voice, what is it full of? Condemnation, shaming you over past things, telling you what you're not. And by the way, let me encourage you, parents. The scripture says, Psalm 112, that your children shall be mighty in the land. Don't allow the culture and the world around you to tell your children what they not. Make sure that you tell your children who they are so they don't walk out of here with a bipolar mentality, but they hear out of your mouth, not out of a preacher's mouth, but out of your mouth. Come on. That you are highly favored by God. You are the righteousness of God. You are the blessed of God. God's got a plan for you. He's got a purpose for you. The blood of Jesus is covering you. Come on, some of you family members. You could shut hell up in your own home. Somebody needs to become the prophet in their own home. God won't do the word you won't speak. God don't do your intentions. He performs his word. Imagine if God's voice is now connected to your ear and it becomes out of your mouth. Now to agree upon something, it shall be done. How powerful would that be over your kid? I remember my mom used to say, you were living way beneath who you are. God's got favor on you. God's got grace on you, Rex. God's got power on you. There's purpose on you. You're going to change the world. I say, mom, don't talk that way to me. She didn't quit. Come on. She was prophesying me blind. Everything that I thought I could get from man, she started speaking about what God could give me. In the middle of the night, if I was lit, if I wasn't, come on, out of my mind, those words came back because they would come back and speak. My parents were telling me, this is who you're going to be. This is who you're going to be. This is who you're going to be. Some of you need that. I'm a be spirit again. Come on. Remember Will I Am back in the day? I'm a be, I'm a be, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a be. Very prophetic. That wasn't a hill song. That was just a I'm a bee song. Some of you need a I'm a bee spirit. Come on, you gave it away to I was spirit. You need a I'm a bee spirit. Pressing into the voice of God. And all of a sudden, Jesus knew and noticed there were boats anchored in the shallow end. To be anchored means to be tied down, locked down, or weighted down by weight. In the shallow. That means the you know, superficial means tiny. It's tough to swim in the shallow. Do you know actually that most drownings happen in the shallow end amongst experienced swimmers? It's called shallow water blackout. They, people get so comfortable in the shallow end, they don't think about having to swim and be wise. Therefore, they succumb to the swells and the movement of the winds and the waters beneath them because they weren't thinking about what they need to do in the water. They let the water take them. 
Isn't that true in life? Most people know what to do. They just forget to do it, and they stand in the shallow areas of their life, and they let the things take them, and they drown out. Come on, somebody. Ooh, that was good. I don't do everything good, but that was good. Good job. Amen, young man. You might be close to 50, but I feel like you're a young man. Come on. Body act right. Come on, somebody. Watch how powerful. Anchored in the shallow end. The shallow end. Well, it's interesting that this boat that we're talking about was a guy named Peter. Peter was raised with the name Simon. It's in John chapter 1. He was a brother of Andrew. And the word Simon means reed, wayward, someone that's easily taken by the wind. A reed happens in their shallow waters. It's interesting. And when Jesus met him, he met him a year and a half prior to this moment. And Jesus, first thing he did when he met him, his brother Andrew brought him, and he says, hey, your parents labeled you and named you Simon, reed, wayward one. That means one minute you're up, next minute you're down. Sounds like our lives, huh? Come on, one minute we got great faith, next minute we're floundering. One minute we're super loving, the next minute we're super negative. A little bit of Simon in us, come on. And he said, Jesus met him and he didn't try to change his behavior. Jesus came to him and says, your parents named you Simon, but we call you Peter the Rock. Isn't it interesting when God goes to change your life, he doesn't go after your behavior. He goes to give you a new identity of who you really are in him. Because if you can see who he made you to be, it will change the way you live, the way you love, the way that you give, the way you show up in relationships, the way you show up. Oh, my goodness. Imagine if we really saw ourselves the way he sees us. Imagine if you got an image that you really were righteous and not a sinner saved by grace. Then you wouldn't have sin conscious. You'd have righteousness conscious that Jesus gave you permission to. Righteous people got rights. They act different. If I'm right with God, come on, I'm coming boldly into the presence of God. I'm coming with thanksgiving. I got a right to healing, a right to hope, a right to restoration. I got a right to abundance. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. I got a king that made me right with himself. Imagine if you got his image of who you really are. You're not a struggler. You're righteous. I'm not, a, I'm not just a guilty, condemned addict. No, you're not an addict. That might be what you're struggling with. That's not who you is. I remember speaking in an environment not too long ago with Katrina. And I was moving fast, praying for people. I said this in the first service. And I moved too fast. And I turned my arm real fast. And I prayed for somebody. And I said, the Lord says, I heard the Lord say, the Lord says you're a powerful man. And I hit this person on the shoulder. And when I did, I turned around and it was a woman. That's not good if you're the minister. That don't do good on social media. Come on. Oh, shoot. So I turned around going, oh, what am I going to do, Pastor Evan? You know what I mean? I'm trying to like, Everything I could do. I don't have time to fast and pray. I said, I went to go say, I'm so sorry, but then I felt the spirit of Jesus in me, and I know him. I know him. I, he said, speak to her and say to her. I said, the Lord says you're a powerful man. Rex, why would you say that? That hurts my feelings. I came today because I'm inspired by your inspiration and personal growth. I didn't even come for the ministry stuff. But why would you say that? That hurts my heart. You can see who I am. And I felt it strong on me again. I said, Jesus says you're a powerful man. Rex, this is horrible. You're embarrassing me. I said, because at the age of four, your uncle, and I named him by name, by the word of knowledge, I said he molested you and abused you, and you were afraid of getting abused again, so you traded your masculinity for femininity, and you hid yourself as a woman all these years because you were being afraid of being abused and taken advantage of, and you never felt enough as a man because you were destroyed as a man. Therefore, you've hidden yourself as a woman, and Jesus loves you enough today. He's not mad at you, but he loves you enough today that he doesn't want you to live as a discount version of who he made you to be, and that that love is coming to reclaim everything that's been hurt and made you live as a false version of who you are. Started weeping and bawling his eyes out. How would God know that? How, how, would, I, how would God know that? He went home. He went home. And he had hair down here, had everything as would look naturally gorgeous woman on the outside. Cut hair. I talked to him today. He's a man today. Lives a fully functional, holy man. Because he got God's word of who he was 
on the inside, it changed the behavior on the outside. When Jesus showed up to Simon, he goes, I call you Peter the Rock. I call you Peter the Rock. I call you stable. I call you strong. I call you fervent. I call you passionate. I call you alive. It's not what you've been called and what others calls you. It's what you had listened to. Come on, somebody. Some of you, you misdiagnose yourself. Therefore, you mistreat yourself. Let's just chew on that. You've let other people put their identity on you, tag you, and label you something that they couldn't see their value, your true value. If you don't see value, you don't add value. That's what I love about Arise Church. There is revelation that lets you see who you really are so you can add value to who you really are. Because when you invest in you, and by the way, you're God's greatest investment. He bought stock in you. He's infatuated with you. He's never thought a bad thought about you. He sees your worst, but he's chosen on purpose to never think a bad thought about you. If you want to know God's thoughts about you today... They're thinking hope, future, healing, redemption. I want to lift them. I want them to be full of hope. I want them to feel alive. I want them to enjoy me, to enjoy church, to enjoy their brothers, their sisters, their family, their lover, their spouse. Some of you think you're not even supposed to enjoy God. How horrible would that be? That's my biggest prayer. I told this to Pastor Evan the last night we were driving. I I started praying this years ago because I served God, but I didn't enjoy him. Have you ever been there? Or am I the only one? I'm not a hypocrite. I'm telling the truth. It would be easy to hide under religious garb. I don't do that. I'd rather be totally honest. God, I'm serving you. I'm supposed to go to heaven. I believe in the cross and the resurrection. But I don't know if I enjoy you. But yet the Bible says delight myself in the Lord. And he can give me desires in my heart. I want desire in my heart. I wanna... So I started praying, God, teach me how to enjoy you. Teach me how to enjoy your presence. Teach me how to enjoy people in my life. Teach me how to enjoy my spouse in a new way, my child in a new way. God, teach me to enjoy people I can serve, people I work with. Imagine how different your life would be if you just started changing that one little tweak. Start saying, God, teach me how to enjoy the drive to work. Teach me how to enjoy negative people. Teach me how to enjoy funky people. Come on. Teach me how to enjoy off people. Come on. Teach me how to enjoy family be- outings or be- dinners with people that are a little bit twe- tweaked. <laughs> how different would you be? You'd become the majority of the influencer because you come in with a higher level of attitude. Come on. Higher level of presence. Listen, watch how wild this is. Jesus goes, yo, yeah, we, we've had a casual relationship for a year and a half, Peter. I gave you an identity. You've come on some of my healing expeditions. He wasn't a full-time disciple. For a year and a half, Jesus let him come and go. So sometimes, that's why he didn't write a gospel. He only wrote an epistle. He didn't write a gospel. For a year and a half, he just walked with Jesus sometimes, and then he went back to his fishing business, third generational fisherman. He owned six fleets of different fishing business, uh, uh, boats. And he would go back. So he went and he saw the miracles. But there came a point when Jesus goes, yo, I don't want a casual relationship with you no more. I want to go deep. I want to have a bond. I want to pull out of you what you did not know what was in you. I know when I spoke Peter into you, everything that Peter was in. One day you would speak on the day of Pentecost when he was a cusser. How many know God takes shaky people and gives them sturdy projects? How many know that in Peter was one day he would speak on the day of Pentecost if he did his faith did not fail? One day he would walk by a church of a lame man, 38 years, and pull him up, and the man would walk. That was in Peter, not in Simon. How many know one day Peter's shadow, Acts chapter 5, would walk in a city, and the whole city would be healed in their minds, from torment, and in their bodies? How many know one day he would raise Dorcas from the dead? In Acts chapter 9, Aeneas, who was dead, bedfast, he would raise him out of eight years of paralysis. That was all in Peter, but it needed Peter not to longer be casual, but committed. Casual means I'm into it sometimes, if I feel like it. You talk to most people in America, if I feel like it. I love the aloha spirit, but beyond the aloha spirit, you got a holy spirit. You got a holy spirit. You got a holy spirit. He's not a human spirit. He's a holy spirit. He's a super happy spirit, but he's still holy. That means he's sacred, not natural. Anybody, hey, he's living in me. How am I treating him? How am I caring for him? Watch how powerful. Jesus goes, I noticed these boats in the shallow end. Okay, I'm trying to take you to another dimension, Pete. 
This is time for you to step into fuller of your purpose. Here's what we're going to do. He goes, I need, the, I need that boat out of the shallow end. I need to step into it. I need to step into it. What are the boats maybe anchored in your life? Tied down. What about the dreamer in you? A life is only as good as its dreams. Dreams are the energy of progress. Helen Keller said what's worse than being born blind, having sight with no vision or dream. Without a, without a vision, you only return to your past or you settle for where things are. How many know without a vision, you perish? Jesus said in the light of your eyes, in the vision of your eyes, you can have life and hope. Without it, come on, you're just in the dark. How many believers are just blinded and they're in despair? They wonder and they wander. They wonder and wander. There's a story about a guy by the name of Stevie Wonder. Anybody know Stevie Wonder? If not, we can pray for you at the end. It's most important that you know Jesus, but second, we can pray for you if you know Stevie. Stevie Wonder was born blind. He asked his mother at the age of seven years old, Mama, why was I born blind? She said, because we're cursed by God. True story. And he goes, oh, Mama, we ain't cursed by God. Come on, even if you're Hawaiian in here, come on, just pretend that you're Stevie. Come on. Everybody do Stevie Wonder. Come on, everybody do it. You all chickened out on me. Come on, some of you. You are my best one right there. I love you. I love you. Watch what's about to happen in your life, by the way. You're going to have incredible miracles that are going to happen in the month of August. It's going to start around August 13th, and it's going to last all the way through October the 20th. You're going to have miracles in your house. There's a provision that you're not expecting that the Lord's going to bring to your life, probably around the 20th of August, a supernatural provision that Jesus is going to bring into your house. There's going to be so much rejoicing in your house. There's going to be an increase, and some family things that have been disconnected and disjointed are about to be re- Restored. You're going to have one of the most incredible third and fourth quarters of your whole entire life. God is mending things and even tissue problems that you have in your body. Tissue problems that you had in your lower stomach and on the right, on this side of the stomach would be your right hand side. The Lord is bringing healing into that area of your body for you. And this is comeback time, a time of restoration for you and your life. God's going to be good to you. God bless you. I gotta still speak my message, but there's somebody here with about a, you got a debt around 14,000, 14,200. I don't even know what it's for, but just lift your hand. There's somebody's got an outstanding debt around $14,000 that God's gonna supernaturally etch a sketch. You're gonna see it off the books this year in the summer months. I I was sitting there earlier and I felt like, so who has got a debt, outstanding debt you owe either on a card or whatever it is, 14,000? Anybody just raise your hand, whoever you are. Going once, going twice, going three. Okay, you do, okay. Lord, I thank you for removing that debt. I thank you for that gentleman for removing that debt. I thank you for supernaturally canceling that debt. I thank you that IRS debts in here would be canceled. I thank you that IRS payments in here would be shifted. I thank you for a realignment in people's finances. We've sought first your kingdom in this house. We're building the first building in 35 years from the ground up. We put first your kingdom. I thank you your people lend. They do not borrow. And I thank you for supernatural debt cancellation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's powerful. Let me carry on, okay? Let me go back here to the dreamer for a minute. Isn't that powerful? Someone's shoulder just got healed too. Someone's right shoulder. Who had pain in your right shoulder? You have? Just stand up real quick. I'll get back to my message, but let me just help you. This is cool. What would Jesus do? What would he do? Would he, would he sit there and go, oh, am I Jesus? No, but what I, should I do if I'm a follower of him? Should I do what he does? Probably, huh? I've done this in the White House. I've done it in the slums of India. Africa's my favorite. I've done it with children with AIDS. I've done it at Eddie Murphy's house. Death Row Records. I've done it at his Suge Knight's house. Pamela Anderson got healed this way. Robert Downey Jr. got healed the Iron Man this way. We just pray for people because Jesus answers prayer. Give me your lovely hand. Jesus, if you're anywhere around the neighborhood, thank you that you're here, at a, Lord, at a Rise Church. People believe you here. Thank you for your healing presence flowing into my beautiful friend's rotator cuff and her labrum area. I pray that you would remove every bit of inflammation. Restore, Father, I thank you, mobility, flexibility. I thank you for bringing healing all throughout her body today. And I thank you, God, that you, Lord, for answering this beautiful woman's prayers. In Jesus' name. You feel that, like, warm sensation in there? Go ahead and look for healing. Move your arm. Look for healing. Tell the people. Let's touch my God. The Holy Spirit. What just happened? You were touched by who? The Holy Spirit. 
Move your arm around. Watch how good. Watch that whole freedom. Watch that. Why don't we give the Lord a clap? Why don't we give Jesus who we're talking about? Jesus gets all the credit. Don't look for me on Christian TV. I'm not on there. I'm not going to sell you some holy water from Jerusalem. I'm not into that. I just think Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's messy. But God's still the same. How many believe that? Isn't that great? Thank you so much for being here. You got a beautiful smile, too. I got to get back to speaking. Give me, all right. All eyes on me, like Tupac said. There we go. All eyes on me. You're like, how does that pink guy know about Tupac? <laughs> Smile. Come on, just as Pastor Evan said, you got 82 muscles in your face. Use them for a minute. All right. The dreamer, if the dreamer in you could talk, would it say it's hard watching you be in the shallow end? You settle for things rather than create things. You settle for roles other people assign to you rather than imagine the world that you can live in. The dreams about who you can become, what you can achieve, but also what you can give. In every generation, God has dreamers. He had Joseph. He had Samuel that would dream with him. He had an Abraham that would dream with him. He had Elizabeth that would dream with him. He had a Lydia who started the book, The Church of Philippians, in her house. Come on, in a little island. A woman had a dream that she could be used and you have the book of Philippians. Everyone likes to quote, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, right? People are saying, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength for me to live as Christ. He that began a good work in me will come to God. God works in me to will to do his good pleasure. The name above every name, and at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord. Where did all that revelation come? From a woman who dreamed that I'm going to open my house to let God work in my home. All that revelation came out of a dreamer. If the dreamer and you could talk today, maybe say, I'm disappointed. I've become disheartened. I've had disappointment. It did not arrive on my timetable, so I gave up. I've shelved the dreamer in me. A life, a family, a church is only as good as its dream. A culture is only as good as its dreams. You say, Rex, haven't you seen all the, we're going through so much on the, on the, after going through COVID and all this stuff? Oh, no, no, no. But haven't you seen heaven has so much going right now that he wants to release in Hilo and Kona? And come on, and by the lava run. Do you, have, have, do you know, have you seen what God has? Eyes not seen, ears not, that he's dreaming dreams that he wants to bring solutions through us? What if we're the answer he's waiting on for us to dream like him and think like him? How can I bring love here? How can I bring hope here? How can I bring healing here? How can I bring mercy here? How can I bring solutions here? How can I bring justice here? How can I raise a standard and help families here? How can I help abuse victims here? How can I stand up and make a difference in my world? Imagine if you dreamt again. That's actually part of the whole, if you don't mind me going a little deeper here, that's actually part of the whole worship experience. Do you want to know why there's a reason why we sing? Do you think God needs me to sing for him to feel good about himself? God's not on an ego trip. That's why ego sucks. Come on, somebody. It's yucky. It smells. I, don't, I hope it doesn't make, that wasn't a bad word. Come on, somebody. Grace, grace, grace. Remember, I flunked out of Bible school. Come on, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Somebody throw holy water on me or something. Come on. But imagine, he's waiting for you. He didn't want David. He didn't want Queen Esther. He, he didn't want Hannah. He wanted you right now. He didn't want Rosa Parks right now. She already didn't give up her seat, and she stood up on that bus and stood up for, 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 for authenticity and for value. God already had a Martin Luther King. He already had an Abraham Lincoln. Now he's looking at us and Hilo going, okay, that's who I want. I want her. I want her. I want him. I know they got weaknesses. I know they got challenges. I know they got family dynamics. I want her. I want him. I want him. I know they did some bad stuff yesterday, and the, uh, but it's going to be okay. I want them. I want them. I choose them. I choose them. I chose them. I chose them. Holy Spirit, awaken them so they don't sleep through the dream. There's a world in you that exists, but it needs to be cultivated and created. Dreams bring hope to a situation. I used this in the first service. There was a tub of water at Harvard, and they put a dead, uh, put a rat in it. They wanted to see how long it would swim before it succumbed to its surroundings. Three minutes, 19 seconds, it gave up in pitch blackness. They took the dead rat out. They put a living rat inside of it, 
and they wanted to see and contrast it, but this time they poked a little hole where a little bit of light could penetrate that place where it was swimming. They want to see how much of a difference. 37 hours and 16 minutes. All because it had a little light of hope. Isn't that how powerful hope is when it anchors our souls? Pastor Evans has been teaching when he's on a season of grace here, when he's been teaching grace lately. Isn't that what it does when you hear about the grace of Christ? It produces a hope inside you when you begin to think with God purpose that you say, hey, I could give a little bit more. I'm not going to quit. Come on, because there's hope that this is going to end well. Some of you, I need to give you a word. You ready for a word? If I give you a prophetic word, this is going to end well. It might not be well in your finances now, but it's going to end well. It might not be well in your family, but it's going to end well. Can I get an amen in that? It might not be well in your body. It's going to end well. Because what God starts, he's going to finish. Come on, somebody. How many know God's going to finish what he started if I don't quit? Watch. Someone's going to dream. God, show me your plans. Don't hide them from me. Show me what you're up to. I want to see I want to be like a kid again, have a curiosity. Jesus said, come on, even if you're 90, come on, have innocence like a king, a kid in the kingdom. There's no age. I'm forever young before Jay-Z ever wrote it. <laughs> come on, I'm, I'm, I have eternity in me. I ain't defined by no age. Come on, some of the people that God used the most were the youngest and the oldest. The middle age were so hard trying to keep it together. Come on, somebody. The people in retirement and the people that were in puberty. Come on, somebody. God's like, let's go for it. You got guts and you got nothing to lose. What about the lover inside you? Has the lover been anchored because of hurt, betrayal? There's some people in here that have been hurt bad. There's some people in here that have been done wrong. And all of a sudden, it's easy to sit there and nurse, curse, and rehearse. Like my friend Larry Lee came up with many years ago all the negative things that have been done to you. It's amazing how many invitations every day that God gives us to a pity party. Are you the only one that gets them or I do? Get, I, I get them. Do you get them too? Are they in your inbox in your mind? Come on, somebody. You're the victim. They stole from you. You're the victim. Oh my gosh, they lied about you. You're the victim because they were racist. You're the victim because they, they didn't do what you wanted them to do. How many know, by the way, that the lover in you cannot live when your expectations are so big but your appreciation so small? Amen. That was worth your gas money. In fact, if you want to cast all the fear out of your relationships in your life, anybody want to do that? Anybody want to do that? What if I gave you a tool right here, better than Dr. Phil? Come on, what if I gave you just a, a revelation? Make your appreciation so big and your expectation so small because if my expectation for my wife is so big, I'm always grading her. I can't love her. I only use her. I'm saying this for someone that's failed and someone that's succeeded on both sides of the coin. Imagine if my appreciation level became so big that I wasn't measuring someone, are you hitting my, are you measuring, are you getting this, are you doing this for me? and I just look at how much I can appreciate, I no longer suffer. Love can live. Because love says, how can I improve you? How can I lift you? But if I'm always meditating on every injustice that's been done to me, I'm sitting there nursing it. Pity. I'm not worshiping God, I worship the idol of pity. But I've learned this from Joyce Myers, you can't be pitiful and powerful. I can't be pitiful and powerful. Which one you wanna be today, Rex? When you get into Monday in Spanish, they call it lunes. Come on, am I going to be pitiful or powerful tomorrow morning? On Thursday, on Miraculous, on Wednesday, powerful or pitiful? On next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, am I going to be powerful or pitiful? It all determines whether I sit there and meditate and take the bait and take the invitation. I'm going to meditate on every negative thing done. How easy is that to do, huh? I'll use this story quickly. There was a woman in South Africa her husband and her child, they were in a shanty black area, and this was before apartheid, there was racial division. A white bigot police officer showed up at their home. He shot and killed the son and made all kinds of racial slurs. That's why he killed him. No, no other, no, no, nothing, nothing ever happened before. Showed up again almost a year later, and they took the husband. 
the wife tried to drive, they didn't have a car, so she took a bus. She tried to go get help from the council of South Africa and the government. They offered no hope because of the count, color of her skin. They refused her. They said, you're just making something up. She didn't know where her husband was, assumed he was dead. They came to the house months after they'd taken him. And there they took her out to a lake where they had wrapped her husband against a big log and they poured gasoline on him and set him on fire and they danced around him, calling him racist names. They were prosecuted in court and they were declared guilty, but they allowed the woman to be able to speak what she thought the sentence would be. She stood up before the judge in South Africa and said these words, number one, I would like by a court appointment someone to take me to the ashes of my, of my husband because he was a wonderful husband and a man. We didn't have, he wasn't very educated, but he was a loving and good, hardworking man and he provided a home for us. And I'm so proud that he was my husband and I want to give him a proper burial. The judge said, of course, we'll do it right away. Then he says, number two, I want someone to help me over. She was with a cane. Can you help me over to that man so I can hug that man and I want him to know that he's forgiven, not just by my words, but by my actions, that I forgive him. See, judge, I, I don't have anything. I don't have an education. I don't have a background. I don't have very much of anything. I don't have very much money. I don't have a car. But one thing I have is I have the love of God in my heart. And I realize if I don't forgive and let this thing go, then I will not live and he'll kill me too. And I realize if God gave me breath on this planet, the best thing I can do to honor him is to love. And I realize if I don't forgive him, I'm going to let him kill the best part of me too. Can somebody help me? They helped her over there. She hugged him and he passed out on the court. And she said to the judge, can you please send that man on a weekly assignment to my home with the police officers so I have somebody to love. I can't get around much anymore, but I need somebody to love so that I can really live. And I don't want to let evil take out the lover inside of me. I got to give this away so that my life is meaningful. Everybody began to weep across the courtroom, and one by one, black people and white people that had been so segregated by political turmoil grabbed hands, and they started to sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. A reformation happened because one woman said, I'm going to let the lover live. The love's got to live. It only takes one person in our families. Come on. It might need to be you today. Say, love's got to live. i got to get out of the shallow end. Love's got to live. I need to forgive some people. I need to let some things go. Maybe I've held some things against God. I need to forgive him. Not that he did you wrong. Your expectations were wrong on your timetable. You didn't get exactly what you thought when you thought you needed it. Therefore, you held resistance. Because what happens when you don't give love? Come on. It hardens your heart. But when you don't get it, it breaks your heart. put that in my pocket and use that on my own life there's things you say under the anointing that you can learn from yourself because God's spirit works through you if the lover doesn't live what's going to happen to our kids come on by this they'll know you're my disciples if you have love anybody still got love in them love ask a different question how can I show up and give love how can I care Jesus shows up and says I need your boat I need your boat I got to get out of the shallow end. Some of you are leaders and you've been in the shallow end. Okay, in fact, God's raising up. God's removing the resistance. There's been resistance spiritually against this, what we're trying to build because what God's about to fill and the move of God that's coming to Hilo. He's strengthening the work in Hilo. I say this under a prophetic gift for a minute. He's strengthening the work in Hilo that what's looked like it's been in ashes and overrun by darkness. God's about to pull something out of the ashes and things that have been disconnected are about to become reconnected for he's answering the prayers of grandmothers that are already in heaven grandfathers in heaven there's about to be a great release of the spirit of Jesus there's going to be a flame that's going to burn on this island a flame of God's going to burn on this island and he's removing the resistance watch the leaders come out of the shallow end leaders are going to begin to mature Leaders in this house are going to stand up. Leaders of men, leaders of women. A leadership gift's going to come out of this place with great generosity and ingenuity. Anybody feel that? The Lord is strengthening what's in your hand. 
He's strengthening what's in your hand. He's going to establish your family. And the leadership gift in you is going to rise. There's a leadership gift in you, and you're going to lead people. You're going to lead people out of stuff that you got stuck in. You're going to lift people and lead people into places of great favor and great freedom in your life. God chose you out. He plucked you out because he's about to elevate you. He sees the warrior in you, and he's going to use that warrior spirit to go fight for people and not fight yourself. You're coming into a great season of freedom, and you're going to lift people to the highest levels. God's going to emerge in these next 36 months, that leadership and gift inside you and he's going to put substantial resources in your hand you'll be able to man to deal with money but you'll also deal with miracles and you'll be able to help to connect the two watch what the spirit of grace does in your life and there's two new angels that are coming around your life in this next season that are going to allow things to birth all around you birth and blossom all around you i feel like i'm saying that to multiple people in here but that's for you specifically Okay, I'm over nine minutes. Thank you for the grace. I'm over nine minutes. Can I, can I, can I land this plane? You cool? Jesus goes, yo, I need that boat. How many know Jesus could have walked on water? He could have spoke new water into existence. He didn't need Peter's boat. He knew, he knew that Peter needed him in his boat. Some of you ought to say, Jesus, get into my business. Come on. Get into my money. Get into my marriage. Get into my kids. Come on. Go mess with my kids till they serve God. Some of you pray too plight prayers. Sick them, Jesus. Sick them. <laughs> Come on, become like a Texas grandpa. Come on. Sick them, Jesus. Sick them. With a low hot twist. Watch. Jesus goes and gives an invitation. He goes, Peter, I want you to go launch out into the deep. God gives the invitation, and Peter gives his limitation. We all have a BS story belief system God wants to know what kind of BS you got because your belief system lets him work or not work he doesn't operate according to your need but according to your become what you believe according to your faith let it be unto you believe and you'll see the glory of God whatever you desire when you pray believe you receive and then you have How powerful Peter goes I'm tired I'm tired. We talk to most people and they're tired. How in the world are our 12-year-olds and our 10-year-olds tired? Anybody remember when you was a kid? Come on, we had like an IV of sugar in us at all times without having to go get, come on, shaved ice with all the toppings on top. Come on, like we would climb trees. You were G.I. Joe. You were Barbie. You was a Ninja Turtle. Come on, somebody. Some of you, come on, you were crazy. Now you became all domesticated and tame. I'm all about comfort and God's all about calling you're on two different frequencies AM FM come on God's trying I want your calling I want comfort I want calling and you wonder why there's God's always messing with you the comfort comes in the calling when comforts the calling happiness is the goal when the calling is the focus come on development is the goal and when you're in development you feel alive It's actually really good. It's better than I know. <laughs> I'm stupid. Okay, I'm not going to land this sucker. Sorry. God gives invitation. He gives his limitation. And plus, nighttime is the normal, natural time. Jesus, in case you didn't know, I'm a fisherman. You're a carpenter. You're telling me to go launch out into that deep right now. I just mended my nets. I'm tired. My body. I'm tired of my mind. You're messing with my industry. You could be my savior, but don't go there. I'm not looking for lordship. I'm just looking for saviorship. See, people can have Jesus as their savior and still live in sin, but I can't follow Jesus and continue to live in sin. Because as I fall into, follow Jesus, stuff just starts falling off. Watch how powerful. He goes, nighttime's the natural time. And why are you saying this? Because God said, I'm trying to take you out of natural time and bring you into a supernatural time. There's a supernatural economy. Why are you saying this in this service and not the first? Because God's about to bring this church into a supernatural time. What it shouldn't be taking, it should, it, should, it should take a lot longer. It should, all of a sudden, there's gonna, you're going to enter into a supernatural time warp. Because the set time to 
favor, Psalm 102, 13. The set time to favor is hit. The set time to favor, there's a threshold of faith that you can step over, and there's a favor can shift. All of a sudden, a Joseph can go from a pit to a palace. Some of you felt like you've been, been punished by God because you've been in secret. God's not been punishing you. He's been polishing you because he's about to give you a platform. I say that prophetically. There's people in here. You have gifting, and God's going to let that gift and that grace be seen on you. He's been polishing you, not punishing you. He's been polishing you, but not punishing you because he's about to break somebody out of the cage. You ain't going to die in your nest. Launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a big old catch. I love that Jesus wasn't like, hey, you might catch a couple fish. Jesus always talks big. How many know your faith rises to the level of your confession? Stop talking small. Faith gets what it talks about. Launch out in the deep. And I end with this. This little boy at a a meeting just a couple couple months back was at Pastor Juergen's church, my pastor. And he came to the door, and I was speaking. 1,800 people were in the room or so. My wife was sitting there. And this little boy, he had a walker, cerebral palsy, incurable, so they say. Walked in with big Coke bottle glasses, interrupts my meeting. He goes, hey, Mr. X. He had a little lisp. He was really cute. He was about 15 years old. He goes, I came to get healed. I go, right now I'm speaking. <laughs> you see all the people? And he goes, yeah. I go, you want to do that right now? He goes, yeah, now's a good time. Go, you realize I'm talking? That's okay. They can wait. He goes, you said Jesus was in the room, so if he's in the room, I'm ready to do it now. Let's get healed. A lot of people with a lot more biblical knowledge sat on their tushy. Come on. I go, where did you come from? He goes, I was way up there in the cheap seats. I go, you went all the way down in a walker? He goes, yeah, you said Jesus was here. I go, you ready to get healed? You ready to stretch out and launch out into a place you've never gone before to get what you never got before? Because you can't keep doing the same thing and expect something different. That's called insanity. Come on, insane in the membrane, Cypress Hill. Insane. We won't sing the rest of that song. That's not on the Hillsong track. Watch how powerful. I go, you're going to have to ditch the crutch and let go of your walker if God's going to bring you into the healing. Because you're always familiar with what you hold on to. Some of us have emotional crutches. Your crutch is the social media. Your crutch is the porn. Your crutch is the gossip. Your crutch is the pity. Your crutch is always talking about who left you 48 years ago. Come on, Ralph. He goes, okay. And he gave it. He goes, I go, hold on to my shoulder. I go, you have, sometimes have to hold on to a brand new group of people if you're going to walk into a real new miracle. You got a whole guy. You want to connect with people that got faith. Come on. They don't anchor you to where you were. They anchor you to where you're going. Come on. That's why we're anchoring. Come on. It arise because we're, we're anchoring to where we're going. Anybody with me? Come on. You're about to land. You're about, you're about to work a miracle. A miracle. All of a sudden, he took a step, and it was jerky, and it was not smooth. It was not Christian TV. I didn't pray for him. He fell over. He goes, oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. How many know some miracles are messy? Some miracles happen when there's mistakes. Some miracles you have to work them out and walk them out. And there's no one there but you, Jesus, and maybe the person that you care about. Come on. He took a step and it did not look like a miracle was working. See, some of you came in today, it doesn't look like God's working. Some of you came in today, your marriage is struggling. You got in a fight in the way here. Some of you are struggling because alcohol is kicking your butt behind the scenes. Some of you came in, it doesn't look like a miracle is working because you're, you're battling debt, you're battling things that can all, but and then you're, you're giving, but yeah, you're, you're struggling, and you're working a miracle out, but it don't feel like a miracle. But thank God you're not what you feel, you're what you decide. You're walking a miracle out, then all of a sudden, after a couple steps, everything that was crooked straightened up, created a miracle in his back. Not that Rex did, not anybody else, but Jesus did in his body. And all of a sudden, he went from barely stepping, moving with jerky moments, to all of a sudden, all of a sudden he started moving and he started running across. There's video all over that place. That boy went from not being able to walk, holding on to a crutch, and he released his faith for the deep. That little boy changed the whole atmosphere. In a moment, in a moment, healing sprung out all over across the room. Over and over and over in that morning, 
umpteen, umpteen, umpteen miracles, healings, and no one prayed for nobody. But one boy had faith to stretch. What's the crutch you got to lay down? And where do you need to stretch? Come on, every one of us could stretch. Anybody with me? Come on. Whether you're 60 or whether you're 10. How many feel like, come on, stretch. No one wants to stretch. I just want to ride. It's not fun to stretch. I want to lift weights. I don't want to stretch. I don't look good in yoga pants. I don't want to stretch. But how many know when God's calling you to stretch, he wants you to go into the deep beyond what you see? Someone lift their hands real quickly. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your life, your presence, your power. Heal me everywhere I hurt. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you for going to the cross, dying and raising again. You're my savior. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my peacemaker. You're my way maker. You're my provider. You're more than enough for me. I thank you for eternal life. I have it. I am the righteousness of God right now. I am forgiven of all my sins, past, present, future. I'm coming out of bondage and coming into freedom. I'm coming out of fear and coming into faith. God's grace is enough for me. Woo, feel that for a minute. Come on, feel that with your hands uplifted. Even if you don't, you're not used to lifting your hands. You try other things, you might as well try this. A living God says lift up holy hands. Your hands aren't what holy. He, he makes your hands holy when you lift them. You're just saying thank you. For 15 seconds, thank God for whatever you're grateful for. From Just 15 seconds. 15 seconds. I want to hear you. Come on, thank God for whatever you're grateful for. Maybe that you could smell the beautiful flowers. You could look on the beautiful ocean. Maybe that you got a house to live in today. Maybe that, maybe that you got a little bit of money in the bank. Maybe that you got a family that loves and adores you. Maybe that you got a church home. Maybe that you're so gracious, that, grateful that God got you out of addiction. Maybe that God got you out of fear. He got you out of jealousy. Maybe that God opened a job for you when there wasn't a job. Maybe you got a promotion. Maybe you got healed in your mind or your body. Whatever you're grateful for, come on, give the Lord some praise today. Give Him thanksgiving today. Use your voice. Shout with a voice of energy in here. Come on, what a powerful God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. There's, a whole, there's, there's somebody here, real quickly, you've had a heart condition, and it's been an irregular heartbeat. I want to say even you might have had a heart attack back a couple years ago. Where are you? And you had a heart condition, but you have, you have pressure in your heart, and you get like, an there's an either irregularity in the heart, or it flutters. Is, where are you at? Is, if you have the guts to, don't come to me afterwards, come to me now. I say that because a lot of people come afterwards. It was me, Pastor. I just didn't want to stand up. I was nervous. Anybody have any, a heart situation that you believe God wants to help you through today, physically? One, two, three. You do, sir. Or ma'am. Sorry, I can't see you. I'm blinded to the light. Is that a ma'am? Ma Excuse me. Forgive me. I, was, I couldn't see because of the light. Can you please come forward, my love? What a beautiful lady you are. <laughs> Honored to meet you. What's your name? Kathy, what a beautiful name. How many believe that God would love to help Kathy today? For real? Why do you do this? Because I care. My mother had fibromyalgia and it took a year and a half working a miracle out. But we would pray in the house and walk something out because I didn't want my mama to die. And when I walked away from the Boston Red Sox to play, to be a speaker that I didn't know how this was going to work, I said, God, everywhere I show up, you've got to be the same as you were when you walked the earth. I don't know how to be a minister, but I know how to care for people, and I'll do my very best, and I expect you to show up and bring healing to people. And he says, you can look that in my word. Everywhere you go, I ask my people who followed me to bring healing and hope and goodness everywhere they go, to leave a God impression, not a good impression. So I'm going to do that. Is that okay? You good with that? Anybody want to help me pray for this beautiful lady? I like you. Come on, I like you right there in the, in the, in the green. Yeah. Can you come help me? Yeah, you. The cool flower in your hair. I got to get my wife one of those. This is going to be a good day for you, Kathy. What's your beautiful name? Chelsea. I love it. You got faith in you. You're a good woman. 
God's going to do really something special for you too, Chelsea, and your family. Thank you, God, for the miracles that are being released to Chelsea and her family. Thank you for your presence over her and her family. Thank you for enriching her and empowering her. And thank you for your healing presence flowing through Kathy's body now. You're going to feel a warmth, Kathy, go through your, inner, your heart chamber, the inner side of your chamber, the electrical side of your heart. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you would regenerate her cardiac cells, that she would have a strong heart and the arrhythmia. I pray it be removed. And I thank you for fluidity in her heartbeats and her blood pressure and no hypoglycemia with the blood pressure. I thank you for touching her blood today and the iron in her blood all throughout your body. This is a good day for you, Kathy. All these wonderful people are praying for you. Come on, can you pray for her for five seconds? And you just, you just receive, my love. Holy Spirit, thank you for imparting Jesus' life into her body, according to Romans 8, 11. Sometimes I don't let people fall, but I did it at Facebook. When I spoke for Mark Zuckerberg, I went after it like a lion. You did this in the world? I've done this more, as much in the world as I've done it in the church. I think Jesus can show up everywhere you work. Words of knowledge, words of wisdom. I work for companies, some of the biggest companies in the world. I've given words to Barack Obama, and I've worked with Mr. Trump. I've given prophet. I've prayed for people in the White House. People gotten healed, nightclubs, you name it. I just believe Jesus is the same. Anywhere you show up, God can operate. Are you special enough? No, I just believe him. I should be shocked if God did not show up, not if he did. I shouldn't be shocked. Come on, everywhere you go, you're the occasion for a God event. This is the boat Jesus can stand in today. Will he stand in your boat this week? Tomorrow, when I'm not on a stage and I travel, he gets an opportunity to step up on an airplane for me. I can bring hope to people, healing to people, words of encouragement to people, love people. I can smile. By the way, that's your biggest logo. You should be the happiest people in the world. You got Christ in you. Help my beautiful friend up if you would. She's elderly. Can we help her up really gently? What happened? I don't think anybody tripped you. I thought she might have because she got healed earlier, but she didn't. What just happened through your watch? Take a deep breath. Watch your chest. What's the difference? I just feel good. I feel rejuvenated, empowered to serve God more and more and more. Why don't we give a Lord a clap and a shout? Come on. Come on, give him a big, 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 big clap. Give the Lord a big clap. Come on, all you powerful people. Arise, church. Give the Lord a clap today for what he's done. I'm going to hand this back over to Pastor Evan. I want to say this. I did this in the first service, and I mean it. Everyone look at me. I want you to look at me in the eyeballs, every person. Thank you for the privilege. I can look at you in the eyes. There, this is a close today. Thank you for the privilege to let me speak to your life. Thank you for the privilege to be honored enough to communicate truth to your heart and your life. How many feel that God's calling us to raise the standard and launch back out in the deep and maybe areas of love, dreaming again, leading again? You say, I don't know where to lead. I didn't know where to lead to. But I found that if you want to be great in the kingdom and greatness is achievable, that I got to start with servanthood. I'm going to find somewhere to serve. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's paying attention. My rewards aren't just here. They're also there. Come on. And so I serve in a children's department. You're going to ask me and Mike Maiden, who was here a couple weeks, uh, a couple years back. Michael Maiden. Anybody remember Dr. Michael Maiden, the powerful prophet? He's a really good friend of mine. And he asked us, hey, would you guys go do the kids and then the youth at a conference after we've already done the main conference? What a privilege. I get a chance to go talk to eight-year-olds. I was in there on my knees preaching my guts out, but praying for kids. And the kids started praying for each other. All these kids started falling over. Kids started getting appealed. I had a broken finger. Now I don't. I was going to have surgery. Now I don't. Kids started praying. And it was awesome because you could start serving and loving kids, loving people, loving families, ushers smiling. When I walked in the door today, how many people greeted me with so much love? Come on, I kissed them, so many people. I kissed so many men and women. It was incredible. <laughs> I loved it. It was the best feeling ever. Katrina goes, what was it like? I go, I just kept kissing people. It was awesome. Thank you for the privilege and honor. How many feel like you could be here tonight for one hour? I'm not going to speak. I'm going to prophesy about the future to people and bring healing to people. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Pastor Evan, Shinobi, I love you guys. Thank you.